Okay, let's go ahead and figure out this nice little math word problem here. And before I solve this, of course, I'm going to give you an opportunity to solve it all on your own. Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section if you think you can get this correct. I'm pretty sure you can figure it out one way or another. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the question. It says, uh, Kim has $5.95. She has $3, 5 quarters, and no pennies. This is what makes up this $5.95. But the question is, how many nickels does she have? So again, if you think you could figure this out, uh, feel free to use a calculator, by the way. As long as you kind of do this in a logical way, think of this as if this was a quiz question or a test question. So don't try to do all this math in your brain. Just kind of like, you know, write a few things down and then put your final answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct answer here in just one second. And then, of course, we're going to go through how to solve this step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. And I can tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle with math. If you fail in math before, if you're failing right now, if you're struggling in math, listen, uh, you don't have to st uh, stay in that current kind of scenario, all right? You can work your way and eventually be very successful in mathematics, but you got to believe that you can do that. And I'm telling you right now, you can. And I'm, just, I'm not saying that just to kind of make this up and make you feel good. If you're willing to work hard and you have some encouragement, the most important thing you need to be successful in math is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for, something like the SAT, ACT, ASVAB, GRE, GMAT, maybe the GED or teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span uh, all these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave uh, links to my math notes in the description as well because too many of you out there are not taking uh, adequate enough notes. Okay, it's, it, When you take math notes, you want to make them as perfect and detailed as uh, possible so you can actually use them when you study from, right? So if you look at your current notes right now and you're like, yeah, they kind of seem incomplete or maybe you're not even taking any notes, improve your notes and things will get much, much better. That I promise. But in the meantime, you can use my notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what is the first three steps in any math word problem? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, then I'm going to show you the answer to this problem. Step one is to read the problem. That's obviously the first thing you have to do. The second thing is to reread the problem. Really make sure you understand what's going on. And the third thing is to read the problem again, uh, again and make sure you understand the question. So a great way to understand where the question is uh, or what is the question of the problem is to locate the question mark. You know, not being silly here, but really focus in on what is the question here. The question is how many nickels does Kim have? Okay. And she has this $5.95 made up of these dollars and quarters and she has no pennies, but she has some nickels and we want to know how many nickels does she have? Well, here is the answer. She has 34 nickels. All right, so how did you do? Hopefully you figured this out. And uh, if that is the case, let me give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and a few stars so you can celebrate your success doing a math word problem today. Nice job. So, you know, there's any number of different kind of approaches you could take to solve this problem, right? And you know, I'm not, I'm not going to judge one approach versus the other. As long as you are able to reason through and get the right answer, that is what counts. However, in mathematics, if you were doing this on some sort of quiz or test, right, this was some sort of um, question on an exam, you want to be able to justify your results. So that's a really important kind of uh, concept of doing math is here is the problem, here is your conclusion. What did you do? What are you saying to get from here to here? Okay, just think of it if you were going to try to explain 
your conclusion to someone. It's, it, what, let's say your best friend says, no, there's not 34 nickels, there's uh, 12 nickels. You know, how would you argue or counter argue that, um, you know, their uh, statement? You're like, no, 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 you don't know what you're talking about. Here is, um, this is why there's 34 nickels. This, boom, 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 boom. You're kind of arguing or stating your case proving your conclusion. This is a huge part of mathematics. That's why you need to be writing things down step by step and you practice that by taking notes and doing all your homework, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution. I'm gonna actually approach this in a, a couple different ways, but the first thing is, uh, obviously we've already read the problem. We'll read it one more time. So Kim has uh, $5.95 total, right? And uh, what makes up this $5.95, of course, we have to interpret the problem a little bit, is $3, right? So she has these $3 right here. Uh, she has five quarters, one, two, three, uh, four, five. She has no pennies, but then she has a bunch of nickels, right? So when we count up all this currency, it's going to add up to this $5.95. We want to know how many nickels does she have? So probably a good approach here is to start taking away the money that we know she already has, right? So she has uh, uh, $3, right? So we already know she has $3. She has five quarters, no pennies. So let's just kind of look at what amount of money represents the total amount in nickels, right? So the way we have to figure that out is to uh, subtract away this $3, this five quarters from her total, and then we'll get the amount of nickels that she has, a total amount, and then we can figure out how many nickels she has. So let's go ahead and take that approach. That's probably what most of you did. Um, and you could do it uh, in a couple different ways. As long as you're justifying or being clear about what you're doing, that's what counts. Okay, so here's $5.95. Let's take away uh, the $3 that she has. So $3, right? Uh, uh, we're going to take away $3 from this $5.95. We're going to subtract $3, $3.00, because $5.95 we're representing as a decimal. So when we subtract away $3, it's going to be 3.00. So that leaves us with $2.95 after we take away the $3. But she has some quarters as well. So let's go ahead and take away the quarters from that $2.95. All right, so how many quarters does she have? Well, the prom says she has five quarters. So how much is five quarters? Well, if I just asked you, hey, uh, I got five quarters in your brain, how much money is that? You're gonna say, well, there's one, two, three, four, uh, four quarters, that gives me a dollar, plus I have one more quarter over here for a total of five, so that's 25. So that's 125, a dollar and 25 cents, right? But the one thing about uh, money proms is this, Notice here we have $2.95. Notice that our cents is being represented as a decimal when we're using the uh, unit of measure of a dollar, okay? So if here, this is the two represents a dollar. This 0.95 is the cents. So um, when we want to determine how many quarters, okay, and we want to kind of represent this in a uh, dollar and cents figure, we could take that five and multiply it by 0.25, because 0.25, that's how much of a dollar a quarter is, okay? And this is kind of the tricky part, I think, for a lot of students, is they might think to yourself, oh yeah, a quarter is 25, that's 25 cents, okay? If I multiply that by five, I'm gonna get 125 cents, but you're not gonna represent things over a dollar and cents. Typically, that's not the way you're gonna do it. We're going to be working in dollars and cents. So represent your quarters as 0.25. So five times 0.25, you get a dollar 25. All right. So of course we can reason through that this way as well. You didn't have to, you know, do this calculation. You probably could have been like, oh, okay, this is a dollar 25. I'll subtract that away. But I want you to kind of really highlight or focus in on what I'm saying here, what I'm highlighting about having uh, your cents being represented as a decimal with a, uh, you know, like a 0.25 as being the quarter. And this is kind of an informal um, lesson on money problems involving dollars and cents, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying. All right, so we have $2.95, we have $1.25 in quarters. So that leaves us, when we subtract uh, the quarters away from the $2.95, we have $1.70 left. So we have no pennies, so all of this is in nickels, okay? So we have a bunch of nickels, and we count up all the nickels, we're going to get a $1.70.
So how many nickels is equal to $1.70? That's really what the question kind of distills down to. And let's go ahead and figure this out. Well, uh, this is basically uh, a pretty, well, it's a pretty easy problem. And a lot of you can kind of do this mentally, right? But let's just really hone in on what's going on. If we think of the value of the nickel in terms of cents, okay? So a nickel is in uh, five cents. The question is how many nickels is in a dollar 70? This unit of measure is a dollar. This unit of measure here is cents, okay? So anytime you're doing any word problem and there's units of measure involved, dollars and cents, uh, minutes and seconds, miles and feet, this will make a difference. You have to be very aware of the unit of measure. So let's just kind of think of right now that the value of the nickel, we're going to think of, the, of a value nickel of uh, being five cents, which of course it is, but we still need to figure out how many uh, five cent units is in this dollar seventy. So let's go in and just think about the problem this way. So a dollar seventy is the same thing as one dollar plus seventy cents. Okay, so one dollar plus seventy cents. So this is in dollars, right? I want to think of dollar in terms of cents because I'm thinking of my nickel in terms of a cent. So how many cents? Uh, uh, are in one dollar, one hundred cents, or in a dollar, and of course we have seventy uh, cents right there. So this is pretty easy, okay? Because I have uh, nickels being worth five cents. That's what they are. I can figure out how many nickels are in uh, one hundred cents. So it's one hundred divided by five, right? Is going to be twenty nickels. Okay, that's how uh, many nickels there are in one dollar. All right, how many nickels are, are there in seventy cents? Or again, this one dollar is one hundred cents. So seventy cents divided by five, you're going to have fourteen nickels. So twenty and fourteen together is thirty-four nickels. So that's one way to reason through the problem. Okay. Uh, again, uh, you could have done this problem slightly different. It's perfectly fine as long as you understand. You can kind of justify your conclusions. That is, um, you know, that's really what counts in, in solving a math problem. Okay, so 34 nickels, but let's go ahead and look at this problem differently. Let's think of a value of nickel as being po uh, 0.05 of a dollar. Okay, not five cents, but five one hundredths of a dollar. Because how many, what's the value of a nickel out of 100 cents? Well, a nickel is five out of 100. 100 cents is one dollar. Okay, so so 0 0.05 of a dollar is a nickel. Okay, or five one hundredths of a uh, five one hundred. Of course, this is cents. This represents a dollar. It's the same thing. So the key is this: when you're dealing with money proms, it's uh, and you want to leave your unit of measure as a dollar. You typically want to do that. Your cents are going to be in decimals. So you got to be very careful with that. So here, when if I think of the value of a nickel as being uh, 0.05 of a dollar, I could simply just straight away take my dollar seventy, okay, and divide it by point. This is one dollar and seventy cents, and I'm going to divide it by 0.05 of a dollar. I'm working with dollars and dollars here, okay? So a dollar seventy divided by a uh, 0.05 of a dollar, which is what five one hundredths of a dollar, which is of course five cents. Uh, 1.70 divided by 0 0.05 on your calculator, you'll see you'll get this lovely answer here, 34, which of course is 34 nickels in a dollar uh, 70. Okay, so a couple of different ways you can look at this problem. Uh, and you know, a lot of you out there might be you know looking at this as a, well, this is super easy. I can figure this out. But you know, it'd be kind of interesting to see how many of you out there thought of this question as pretty easy to do, but maybe kind of ran into uh, some stumbling blocks, right? I think the thing with math is this: if you've been away from math for a while and you haven't done any math problems, it's like a skill. It's like riding a bike. You're going to be rusty, you know, in the beginning. You're going to have to brush off old skills, and there's no other way to get better at math than to practice, right? You got to, um, and if you're trying to. Uh, improve in word problems, you need to do more word problems. Now, this is kind of basic mathematics here. Uh, if you need help with basic math and basic math word, uh, word problems, etc., let me give you a couple suggestions. One, I do have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. 
uh, that has like kind of basic level math word problems. But if you're looking to improve your basic math skills, kind of things that you uh, that we all learned at elementary school level, maybe a little bit of high school or middle school level, uh, check out my little mini course in my math help program. It's, I call it my math foundations course. It's a three chapter course. It really covers all the fundamental math skills that we get in elementary school, place value, fractions, uh, you know, the basic math operations, how to divide, multiply, decimals, division, all that kind of good stuff, percent, et cetera. So if you're kind of getting back into math, I would strongly recommend that course. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.